What's up, guys? We are back with a full NBA slate here on Tuesday, October 29th. We're going to break down every game and look at the bets on the side and the over-unders and throw some player props in there for each game. So buckle up. We have a great video for you tonight. Monday went pretty okay, guys. We ended up a solid 4-1 and one on the night. We hit the Steelers minus 6. They came away with a comfortable win there in the end. I messed up on that over-under number, guys. And we were on the under in the Monday night football game, the under 36.5. But... Even though that one didn't hit, guys, we hit Russell Wilson under 14 and a half rushing yards at even odds. He did very little out there. We had a couple NBA plays as well. We hit the over in that Pacers Orlando Magic game, and we also hit the Cleveland Cavaliers there at plus two and a half. They won that game straight up. So a very good night overall. Let's get back after it here on Tuesday. If you want to win all of your bets today, hit that like button. It's good luck and show support for the channel and all the hard work we're putting in every single day. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on our daily content. You can now also sign up for each channel membership by clicking the little join button right below the video. Members get exclusive early access to all NFL and college football videos and get their names up on screen just like right now. I really appreciate the support from all of you. Seeing that badge next to your comments really keeps me motivated to bring you the best information possible every single day. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. We have a team of experienced cappers over there for every major sport, currently covering NFL, NBA, NCAA football, UFC, NHL, and MLB. This is one of the best times of the year to be in the mix with so many sports going on. Click the link in the description if you're interested in signing up and also to join our free email list to get the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox. Comment below with any bets you're looking at today and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We are committed to responding to every single comment every day. So let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our favorite picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into game one, guys. We have the Denver Nuggets going on the road to take on the Brooklyn Nets. Denver comes into this game not off to the hottest start, guys. They are 1-2 and two on the season. That one win was thanks to a very tough win they got last night playing at Toronto. They won in overtime 127-125. to 125. Jokic is off to an amazing start. The dude is absolutely balling out there, but it just feels like he is having to drag this team to victories because Jamal Murray is off to a very rough start to his season uh, in 40 minutes of game time there against the Raptors. So he played 40 minutes last night. He's going to have to play tonight. In those 40 minutes, 6 of 20 from the field, 0 of 2 from 3. He did have 9 rebounds and 7 assists and posted a plus 8 out there, but... Yeah, guys, that is not very efficient scoring. Not what we were hoping to see. I kind of thought Jamal Murray would have a little bit of a bounce back here to start his season after such a disaster showing there in the Olympics. But, man, that so far has not been the case. Jokic really having to carry this team. He was 18 of 27 for 40 points, 10 rebounds, only 4 assists, but nobody could make any shots for him. The Nuggets did shoot 45% from 3, but that was mostly uh, thanks to Watson off the bench. And, yeah, Aaron Gordon knocked down a couple threes. Jokic knocked down three threes. Michael Porter Jr. was only one of four from deep. Like this, uh, this Nuggets team not really looking so hot. They definitely have some some depth issues. The bench guys all posting or mostly posting negative plus minus ratings, and they just depend for yoke on Jokic for so so much out there. I mean, the poor guy's got to do everything. He's got to rebound. He's got to run the entire offense. He's not supposed to have to score 40 points a night for this team to win. He needs to be scoring in the you know mid to upper 20s each night. And I think that could be sustainable. But what they're having him do right now is not going... He played 44 minutes last night, guys. And we're in game three of the season. He's having to play 44 minutes in overtime games to try and just will this team to just the narrowest margin of a win over a terrible team like the Toronto Raptors. So, yeah, very, very sketchy what we're seeing right now for Denver. I don't I don't like what we're seeing at all. And they're only one and two on the season. So a lot of room here to improve. And they get a shot here, but man... It's going to be on back-to-back -back nights. They played last night in Toronto. Now they have to make the, I mean, not crazy long flight, but now they've got to make the flight back through customs and all that back to Brooklyn to take on the Nets. So we'll see how that goes. Brooklyn comes into this game fresh off of a win of their own. They took down the Milwaukee Bucks 115-102. to 102. So pretty good stuff there. It was their first win of the season. They lost to the Hawks and lost to the Orlando Magic. That Orlando game wasn't super competitive, but in their first game at home this season at the Barclays Center, we saw the Nets get that 115 to 102 win against a Bucks team, which, you know, uh, jury's still out on how good Milwaukee's actually going to be this season. I doubt they'll be, you know, a complete disaster unless it comes time to like, they, you know, end up actually trying to trade Giannis or whatever. That could end up being one of the most blockbuster trades we've seen in recent, you know, history. But in that win that the Nets 
Jets had, guys, we saw, you know, great stuff from Schroeder and Cam Thomas continues to just be on a heater, guys. 35 minutes, 10 of 21 from the field, 2 of 8 from 3, but got to the line 11 times, made 10 of those, putting up a plus 9 and 32 points scored. Schroeder was the real catalyst behind this win, to be honest. I mean, he posted a plus 27, but excellent, excellent stuff out there. And there's some interesting pieces on this roster, guys. Kind of funny to see Ben Simmons out there for 24 minutes, scoring 2 points. Four fouls, two turnovers. I guess he did have six assists and six rebounds. But, yeah, guys, I'm not hearing any uh, positive things about Ben Simmons, really, if you ask me. Not a guy that I am uh, super-duper interested in. Not going to be having a great time. Unless we see his numbers, you know, drastically spike. We saw great stuff from the Nets bench out there. Clowney and Claxton both looking very, very good. Yeah, some decent three-point shooting there from Clowney. And Claxton doing his thing on the interior with 11 rebounds there and two blocks. So, him being in there to defend. Jokic and stuff like that could be pretty key in this game. I don't really think anybody can defend Jokic at this point, but oh, yeah, guys, I mean, we'll see. Got to be a little bit tired coming off of playing that many minutes last night, but we'll see how that eventually ends up going. But right now, guys, these uh, Brooklyn Nets, they're not looking amazing necessarily, but they're looking like a feisty team, one you're probably not going to have a great time playing against, and they're going to be at home for this game, and we obviously do see that, you know, we've got Denver on the road on back-to-back -back nights coming off of an overtime game, so We'll see what kind of effort level we can get out of them. I mean, obviously, Brooklyn, not the toughest opponent, like I've said. So we'll see how that goes. It appears that everybody's going to be playing in this game for effectively both teams, except for Ben Simmons, who, yeah, uh, I do not care about that. Uh, we're not going to see Bogdanovich play yet. He's not coming back yet, and we don't know when that's going to be. Still dealing with that foot issue. So, yeah, I think they probably want to just keep him on ice and eventually trade him. So, we'll see how that goes. But apparently, everybody for the Nuggets is going to play in this game. So, looking at some trends for this one. Denver, they're still 0-3 against the spread this season. They are 2-1 to the under. Brooklyn, 2-1 against the spread and 2-1 and themselves to the over. The Nets are getting 5.5 points here. We've got an over-under of 218. And first of all, guys, I would say that over-under num over, over under number jumps out at me a little bit. I think we'll see plenty of offense in this game despite the Nuggets being tired. Brooklyn not going to be a team that plays insane defense. I mean, in their last game where we saw the Bucks only score 102 points, they still got to 217 total points. So I think, you know, an overplay in this game is pretty reasonable to me. I I know the Nuggets are showing trends, you know, towards the under a little bit, but I think we'll see a good amount of offense in this game. In terms of the side, it's very tough to call here, guys, but I'm leaning towards the Brooklyn Nets getting five and a half points. I don't know if the Nuggets really deserve to be favorites against anyone right now, especially when they're coming off a back-to-back -back in overtime and playing in Canada there. So yeah, not the easiest flight back, generally speaking. So go ahead and give me the Nets and the points here as a very small lean. And guys, in terms of some player props for this one, I like Jokic to have another big night. Just seems like that's going to happen here. I like him over 49 and a half points, assists, and rebounds at minus 110. I do think this could be a triple-double kind of night for Jokic, although the price on it isn't quite good enough for me to justify that. I think we'll see him take a step back here in scoring. I think we'll see the rest of the Nuggets, hopefully for his sake, step up a little bit here and help him get to the assist numbers he needs, but he'll easily get to double-digit points, obviously, and easily get to double-digit rebounds, so I think there's a good chance here we could see him, you know, get over the 50 we need for this, uh, you know, for this particular prop to hit. I also like Aaron Gordon out there, over six and a half rebounds at minus 115. He's a very solid rebound somebody's got to get those boards there are going to be plenty of rebounding opportunities with these two teams playing each other I think and getting to seven for Aaron Gordon here at minus 115 I think is extremely reasonable and last prop we've got for this one I like Cam Thomas over 26 and a half points it's at minus 125 so not a price tag that I'm in love with but I do think his heater is probably going to continue this guy is an absolute bucket out there so he's going to continue scoring is that going to lead to you know Brooklyn being able to keep this game close I think there's a good chance we'll have to see but I do think Cam Thomas probably going to get to that 27 point threshold. Jumping in with our first ever sports book ad guys and I am super excited to tell you about Bet Openly. They are unlike any regular sports book out there. Their whole goal is to facilitate peer to peer betting. So instead of them having a vested interest in you winning or losing your bet, they just want to match you up with a real person who wants the opposite side. At Bet Openly, you will be paying drastically reduced juice on your bets, close to 1% instead of the 10% you would pay at any of the big guys. Not having 
to fight that built-in house edge sounds pretty great to me. Bet openly supports all your favorite bets, including props and parlays. And get this, guys, you can even be the house on parlays, meaning you only need a single leg to win to cash your bet. Most importantly, Bet Openly will never limit your account for being a consistent winner, which is something that happens all the time on the bigger sites. If you're interested in signing up, click the referral link in the description of this video and let's cash some bets. Now, guys, back to the games. Next up, guys, we got the marquee game of the night. We got the Dallas Mavericks going on the road to take on the Minnesota Timberwolves there on TNT. The Mavs come into this game, guys. They are uh, they're doing okay. They're two and one on the season. They did lose that game against Phoenix. They took down Utah their last time out, winning one ten to one hundred two. Lots of good vibes there for Clay Thompson playing on the Mavs. He's you know he's doing his thing out there, so that's good to see. Wish he was still doing it for the Warriors, but what are you gonna do in that win over Utah, guys? I mean, it wasn't a blowout win by any stretch. One ten to one too you know so fairly competitive we saw a pretty bad night out there from Luca he had only 15 points he posted a plus five but the dude was one of nine from three he was only five of 22 from the field in general he was very very close to a triple double guys eight assists and nine rebounds he was kind of taking you know a going on the back foot a little bit you know letting Kyrie do his thing and PJ Washington had a really good night I mean Clay was doing his thing too four four out of 11 from three is not exactly what we expect from Clay but he was seven of 15 from the field and had a a couple assists had a couple rebounds like seems like clay is working his way you know in there and getting you know acclimated to all these new teammates for you know the second team he's ever played on in his you know professional career yeah this this squad this dallas team definitely seems like they made a great addition there we do have a little bit of injury news here maxi cleaver not going to be available for this game guys he is already injured which did not take long to be honest uh seeing him jump around and stuff i was a little bit concerned and then yep hamstring won't even travel with the team so we'll see when he's back I don't think that's a, you know, super pivotal piece for this team, guys. I mean, when you've got Derek Lively out there, you've got P.J. Washington, and you've also got Daniel Gafford, like, you've got the size out there, too. You know, they're not going to miss Cleaver too much. They maybe miss his shooting, I guess, just a touch, but I don't even think that's something they're super concerned about. So in that, you know, pretty competitive win, we did see, you know, Dallas not shoot the ball well from three at all. They only shot 28.2% from three, 11 of, 19, 11 of 39 overall. Didn't get to the rim a ton. They were even on the boards with Utah, which is something they definitely have to be a little bit concerned about. Like, this is a, you know, Dallas team that's supposed to be elite on the boards, and they just weren't that elite. And while the bench, there were some bright spots. The starters, I mean, yeah, uh, Gafford not having an amazing time, although he put up some good numbers. Like, I don't know, just didn't feel like a great max effort game there for Dallas. And maybe it was a look-ahead spot here as they were waiting, you know, to be able to take on the Minnesota Timberwolves, who they come into this game 2-1 and one on the season as well. They got off to a pretty bad start there against the Lakers, losing 110-103, to 103, but followed it up with a very close, very competitive 117-115 to 115 win there at Sacramento. And then in their last game, guys, they were playing at home against Toronto. They won that one 112-101. One to 101. And Ant was pretty fired up for that game. Uh, hasn't been the easiest start to the season necessarily for the Timberwolves, but they've got a lot of moving pieces. It seems like they're finally getting things figured out. We see Ant continuing to shoot a ton of threes, guys. He was 5 of 12 from long range in that game against the Raptors. So, you know, shooting the ball well, but only 9 of 21 from the field. He's not finishing around the rim like we're used to seeing him finish around the rim. Julius Randle had a great game, posting a plus 7, so not the craziest plus minus numbers, but 24 points, 9 of 16 from the field. He also had 9 rebounds and 5 assists. Definitely seems like he's taking the uh, rebounding aspect of, you know, the situation here in Minnesota a little bit more seriously. We did see Mike Conley continue to struggle a bit. Uh, Rudy Gobert, he's doing what he does in the regular season, playing, you know, good, I guess, defense, depending on how you want to look at it. And, you know, he scores a few points, although he looks lost every time he touches the ball and, you know, picking up some rebounds. So good stuff from Rudy there. But Nas Reed continuing to struggle with his jump shot is a little bit concerning. Dante DiVincenzo, 4 of 11 from 3, only 5 of 15 from the field. When he comes in, he's getting them up, guys. And I do think we're going to see DiVincenzo break out of this little slump here and go nuts one of these days. And it could be tonight. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely not impossible. Could happen at any time. This kid can be an absolute flamethrower. So we'll see what he can get done. I'm excited to see Dante. DiVincenzo thrive here with the Timberwolves after, you know, kind of getting shoved out the door there for the Knicks, which 
ha- I have to be honest, guys. It's kind of some feels bad, man, situation there. I mean, as a as a fellow redhead, seeing a redhead get you know booted out after an amazing career season did not feel great. So we'll see what we get from the Timberwolves overall in this game. I'm looking at some trends here, and like also we have to for sure keep in mind the Mavs could be a little bit tired. They are playing on back to back nights after winning at home against Utah, so they did have to travel from Dallas to Minnesota. So not the craziest travel, but also not nothing. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. Both teams come to this game one and two against the spread of the season. Both teams come into this game two and one to the under. Uh, guys, in terms of the side here, five and a half points feels like a lot. I think I'm going to lean a bit towards Dallas and the points since I do think this will be a close game. I haven't loved what I've seen from the Timberwolves here in their early going. So definitely give me a look at the, uh, you know, the Mavs and the points. In terms of the over/under of 224, both teams showing you know a little bit of a trend towards the under here, and with the Mavs being a little bit fatigued possibly, and the Timberwolves not shooting the ball insane, I'm gonna lean towards the under 224 here. In terms of some player props for this game, first up, I like Doncic to have a bit of a bounce back here. I'm taking him over 28 and a half points here at minus 120. He's coming off a terrible game. I think we'll see Anthony Edwards guarding Kyrie primarily, so I don't think we have to worry too much about that. And I haven't been in love with what I've seen from the Timberwolves defense this season necessarily just you know the numbers are okay but just in general not loving it so go ahead and give me Doncic over his points I also like Julius Randle here this is a spot I think is very reasonable over one and a half made three pointers guys he took four of them against the Raptors I think we're gonna see him continuing to shoot threes and all he's got to do is make two of them and we are automatically home there and last but not least guys I like Jaden McDaniels here under nine and a half points at minus 120 he is going to be absolutely exhausted from playing defense Defense constantly. I think we know very much for sure that Ant and, you know, we'll, we see uh, DiVincenzo coming off the bench and taking plenty of shots. And we've got Julius Randle taking plenty of shots. Like, I don't think there's going to be that many shots out there for Jaden McDaniel. So to see him go under it on his nine and a half points, I don't think he's going to get a ton of threes up or anything like that. So that makes pretty good sense to me. Hey guys, jumping in here with a quick ad break. First of all, this is a great time to sign up at stumpthespread.com. Signing up for a premium membership gets you access to our entire team of cappers covering NFL, NCAA football, NBA, NHL, UFC, and Major League Baseball. If you just want to test out the service, a great way to do that is by joining our free email list, which will get you the occasional free or premium pick straight to your inbox. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're new and become a channel member for early access to all of our NFL and NCAA football videos. Also, if you want to experience peer-to-peer sports betting while paying almost zero juice, click the link in the description and sign up at betopenly.com. Now, guys, back to the games. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Sacramento Kings going on the road to take on the Utah Jazz. The Kings come into this game, guys. They haven't gotten off to the smoothest start either. They did just manage to get the win against Portland, so they'll definitely take that. But unfortunately for them, that game happened last night in Sacramento, and then they had to travel to Utah. Obviously, a very, very short travel situation. So I don't think we have to be too worried about that this early in the season. And, you know, it's looking like everybody's certainly going to be playing playing in this game for the Kings. So I'm not too worried about it, but I do think there's some fatigue that will you know, you have to take into account a little bit here. In terms of, you know, like production overall, we saw a decent game from Sabonis. I mean, 13 rebounds, 16 points, not bad. He was one of two from three, so that's nice to see him, you know, taking some shots there. But DeRozan was the guy who really had a good time. DeRozan and Fox led the way. And, I mean, DeMar, 7 of 14, 9 of 10 from the free throw line, so that's got to feel nice. He had a few assists mixed in there, three steals in the game. Like, just all over the place in that one and looked very, very good out there. I think this is going to be a great addition here for the Kings. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for everything to mesh. That's just kind of how basketball works, but I do think we're going to see positive stuff from him. Keegan Murray did not have a good game. 0 of 3 from deep, 2 of 9 from the field in general. In his 33 minutes, he only scored 6 points, and he had 5 personal fouls. This is not what we expect to see from Keegan Murray, guys. This kid is very, very good out there. A premium level shooter. I think we'll see him bounce back here very, very soon. De'Aaron Fox, only 9 of 20 from the field but still managed 24 points and he had you know some rebounds two steals like pretty good defense getting played out there and yeah just in general generally speaking guys i mean you know kavon herter he had a good game uh you know four of nine from three 18 points 
good stuff. This bench uh, for the Kings is a concern to me, though. I, except for Malik Monk, obviously the dude is a monster coming off the bench. He did only have 12 points in 19 minutes, which isn't his norm, but generally speaking, guys, the bench is where my concern lies there for the Sacramento Kings. So we'll see how they do in terms of you know bench production in this game and stuff, but I do think when you are bringing somebody like Monk off the bench, you've at least got some scoring punch. Whether or not that's going to be enough to you know, like keep you even with a good team, we'll see how that works. But generally, guys, this is not you know not a Sacramento Kings team that I have too many concerns about. And we'll see what they can do here as they go on the road here, playing on back-to-back -back nights to take on the Utah Jazz, who come into this game still looking for their first win of the season, guys. They haven't played the easiest schedule. Their first three games were against Memphis, against Golden State, and then at Dallas. So that is not a super easy way to go. Two out of those three games were very competitive. They did get absolutely blown out by the Warriors, but I think the Warriors are going to blow out a few teams, and that was just a crazy, crazy shooting night as well. But yeah, in their 102 to 110 loss there against the Mavs, we saw Markinen have a really rough time out there. Only 4 of 15 from the field. He was 3 of 5 from deep, but just couldn't get anything going inside the three point arc. He had nine rebounds, a couple of assists, posted a minus four. So, you know, not a disaster of a night, but just not what we're used to seeing from him. Colin Sexton went absolutely bonkers. Nine of 12 from the field, two of three from deep. 23 points. He was the only starter to post a positive plus minus rating. So yeah, expecting continued good stuff from Sexton. Uh, Keontae George continues to struggle here a little bit out of the gate, but he did have five assists. He did have three turnovers, but we're not too worried about him. I think he's going to be all right out there. But generally the guy we're looking at in this one to have a bounce back is Markinen, who just like did not look great there. So yeah, I think we'll see him turn it around in this game for sure. Uh, the bench there for Utah, not a bench that I'm crazy, crazy about. I mean, John Collins coming off the pine, not bad. Jordan Clarkson, he's coming off a bad night. I mean, 3 of 11 from the field and 1 of 6 from 3. He's a flamethrower coming off the bench. I'm expecting him to bounce back sooner rather than later as well. And guys, looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Jazz are getting 5.5 points at home. We've got an over-under of 234 out there. Sacramento, they're 0-2 against the spread this season. They're 2-0 to the over. Utah, 2-1 against the spread and 2-1 to the under. So in in terms of the over under for this game 234 is a lot but given these two teams i don't think it's a crazy crazy number i'm going to shade just a slight bit towards the under i guess but the over under on this game not really a play that i'm super interested in you could definitely talk me into the jazz here getting five and a half points though i do think the kings are going to be a little bit tired and we got marketing in a big bounce back spot so i think we'll see a close game uh this, this seems like a very very sketchy spot to me though i'm not going to lie to you guys so i'm not 100% convinced on the side on this one. Not 100% convinced on the over-under. There are some props that I think are pretty reasonable, though, and we're going to go ahead and hop into those right now. And first up, I think Keegan Murray, over 14.5 points. It is at minus 130, so that price tag is a little bit annoying, but this is a nice bounce-back spot for him after a weak shooting game against Portland. I think we'll see him knock down a few threes. He's going to get some shots out there, and I think he'll make enough of them to make this work. And I think they need him to be a little bit more assertive there on offense anyway, so I think that would just help everyone involved. I also like Malik Monk here coming off the bench over 13 and a half points. He's playing well in limited minutes. I think he'll get a few more minutes in this one. And, you know, especially since it's a back-to-back -back night situation, he only played a few minutes last night and the starters played a ton. So I love Malik Monk over 13 and a half points at minus 115 in this game. This play almost 100% ending up in the pinned comment there. And guys, on the Jazz side, I like Markin to have a big bounce back here. I'm taking him over 31 and a half points plus rebounds. It's at minus 110. I think that's a great price. I don't think he's going to get a crazy amount of rebounds here against Dallas. You know, uh, Gafford, Lively, other guys out there that can rebound for Dallas as well. But I do think we'll see Markinen get, you know, quite a bit of offense going this one. Definitely looking for a bounce back shooting game from him. And yeah, just throw some rebounds in there. And I think we comfortably get over that 31 and a half. And at minus 110, not that bad of a price. Last but not least, guys, I like Colin Sexton over 16 and a half points in this one. The price tag's very nice, minus 105, and the dude is playing absolutely out of his gourd right now. I mean, 23 points last night. I don't think he's the kind of guy that's going to let being tired affect him too much, and he shouldn't even be that tired. It's the Kings that are playing on back-to-back -back nights, so I'm expecting big, big stuff from Colin Sexton. He only played 28 minutes. Hopefully, we can get him at least to that 28 to like 32-minute range, and if we do, I think he very easily gets to 17 points in this game without too much of a sweat. Last but not least here, guys, we are looking at the New Orleans Pelicans going on the road to take on the Golden State Warriors. The Pelicans come into this game, guys, 2-1 and one on the season, so I bet they don't, uh, you know, hate where they're at right now but things could be getting a little bit you know a little bit weird just 
I don't know, things things are feeling odd. The whole the Zion situation, and yeah, I just don't know what to make of this team right now. I mean, they just played back-to-back -back games against the Portland Trailblazers, and they lost the second game against the Trailblazers. And it was a blowout, guys. They lost 125 to 103. Like, what is going on? It took kind of miracles for them to beat the Trailblazers in their first game. Like, I don't understand. This is supposed to be a very good Pelicans team. They've got supposedly superstar level talent on the roster. But yeah, in their last game, guys, getting blown out by the Trailblazers, we saw Zion Williamson, 3 of 12 from the field for 14 points. Yeah, what is the deal with that? Brandon Ingram, a down shooting night, 7 of 17, 0 of 3 from deep. We saw CJ McCollum try and pull this team to a win. I mean, 10 of 21 from the field, 27 points. 3 of 10 from deep. I mean, yeah, he had four steals. Like, he was doing everything out there, but he still posted a minus 29. And just no good stuff to report here for the starters, really, in that game. I mean, I guess Herb Jones had a little bit better of a shooting night, but overall, a very much laying an egg situation there for the Pelicans. Did not like what I saw from them in that game at all. The bench didn't look great. They couldn't shoot the ball. They ended up getting drastically out-rebounded by the, by the Blazers. Like, just weird, weird, weird stuff there from, uh, you know, a New Orleans team that's supposed to be better this year, supposed to be really good this year. We'll see. So far, not delivering on that idea. So we'll see how things go. I mean, I, I was not, not, not loving what I saw from the Pelicans in that game at all. And they're taking on a Golden State Warriors team that finds themselves in a really weird spot, guys. I mean, Steph Curry going to be out for this game, going to be out for a little bit here with that rolled ankle. We also have some other injury news breaking kind of last night is that Andrew Wiggins maybe won't be playing in this game, guys. I mean, yeah, shocker here to see Andrew Wiggins about to miss time. It seems like that's what the dude does these days, but at least it's not a personal issue. At least it's a back issue this time. He's listed as day-to-day -day with a lower back strain. We just don't know for sure yet whether or not he's going to play in this game. So we'll have to wait and see. If he is out, that obviously changes things a lot, but the Warriors are going to you know, have to put that depth on display, guys. Their last game, they did end up losing to the Clippers, which uh, kind of weird, but when you see Steph go down like I don't think you can be too shocked to see the Warriors have a bit of a down game they've gotten off to a decent start to the season going two and one but yeah just not enough production out there Wiggins tried to carry the load he had 29 points in that game I guess he was carrying him so hard he hurt his back but Steph yeah I mean he had 18 points in his 27 minutes but yeah rolling that ankle we just don't know when he's going to be back Kaminga with that contract situation kind of, uh, you know, I don't know, seems like it might be bothering him because he is not off to the hottest start this season. In the loss to the Clippers, he was only 4 of 10 from the field and 1 of 6 from 3 for 12 total points. Just not loving what we're seeing from him. Draymond, only 2 points in the game. Like, he has to step up, and I think maybe he will here with... Curry out. We're going to see some bench guys needing to get more run. I think Buddy Heald is obviously in a huge bounce back spot after going only 3 of 14 from the field in that loss to the Clippers. It was really just a bad shooting night from the Warriors in general. I mean, Pazemski went only, you know, 0 of 5 from 3 for 4 points. Like, everybody should be in a bounce back spot here. And I think there's a good chance we do see them bounce back. Although, you know, it is rough seeing your best player go down. So we'll see how things go there in terms of the numbers for this game and the trends. New Orleans, they're one and two against the spread, two and one to the over. The Warriors are two and one against the spread and two and one to the under. And guys, first up here with the Warriors getting two and a half points and an over under of 217 and a half. I love the over in this game. I think we're gonna see plenty of offense out there. I think we're going to see, yeah, major, major scoring numbers in this one. So definitely give me over 217 and a half. I also think you want to be looking at taking the uh, the Pelicans here at minus. I think you can find some minus one and a halfs out there possibly as things have progressed. But we'll see how, you know, the Andrew Wiggins news develops throughout the day and stuff like that. But I think you might slightly want to be on the Pelicans here. But that's interesting. It's an interesting side. I'm not 100% sure which one I want to be on here. But in terms of some player props for this game, first up, I think it's time, high time here for Draymond Green to step up. I'd like him over eight and a half points scored in this game at minus 115. Shouldn't take much for him to get to that number. A couple, you know, his weird little handoff things or fake handoffs and yeah, get him a couple, th get him a three or two. I think with Curry out, we'll see Draymond be a good amount more assertive there on the offensive end, or at least that's what I'm hoping for here. And I also like Draymond here over 14 and a half points plus assists at, you know, minus 120. You could also look at the rebounding situation and stuff like that. But I do think this is going to be something of a bounce back game and a game where we see Draymond just be much more assertive out there. And guys, on the Pelican side, I like CJ McCollum here a little bit over 26 and a half points plus assists. Seems like he's more than willing to get the shots up, especially when people are struggling. So yeah, go ahead and get 
give me McCollum here to have a pretty good night. And it's at minus 110, so not too bad of a price tag. Although the Warriors do play some defense, so him getting to those numbers might be a little bit tough. But we'll see. This one probably not ending up in the pinned comment. But one I do like a good amount is Trace Jackson Davis over a half of a steal in this game at minus 125. I don't think we're, uh, you know, in love with the kind of, you know, control we see, you know, the, the turnover numbers for the Pelicans are not great. I mean, they turned the ball over 15 times against the Trailblazers, so I think Trace Jackson Davis coming up with a steal in this game makes a good amount of sense. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck in all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out StumpTheSpread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.